Before we get started, I want to quickly let you know that my preparing for a front-end interview course is available at a 50% discount and the link is in the comment section down below. Hey everyone, welcome to this video on the next JS learning path in 2021. Now I know we are already halfway through this year, but this video is a byproduct of me working on the next year series that you're all eagerly waiting for. I'm sure there are a lot of us who are just getting started with Next.js and you're unsure what are the different topics to learn and how you should progress. I've created this video to serve as a guideline for anyone who is on a Next.js learning path. I have to tell right away though, this path is my personal opinion and is by no means an exhaustive list of what you should be learning in Next.js. But it will for sure give you an overall picture of what you need to learn. Now Next.js is a React framework for production, which means as a prerequisite, please make sure you're familiar with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React before starting with Next.js. Now I have divided this learning path into six sections, each representing a core section in Next.js. Let's begin with the first section, which is routing. As I mentioned earlier, Next.js is a framework. So routing is a feature provided by Next.js. We'll start off by understanding that Next.js follows a page-based routing mechanism. So any file you create inside a folder called pages will automatically become a route in the browser address bar. There is no code config needed. Once you get the hang of setting up some basic routes like home, about, and dashboard, you'll move on to nested routes. For example, routing for block sites, product pages, etc. You'll next learn about dynamic routes, which help you implement the list detail pattern. Product details page, for example. Then you have nested dynamic routes, which is a combination of the above two. You'll also learn about the catch-all route, which lets you catch any URL matching a specific pattern. This, for example, is useful in a documentation website. Now navigating through URLs is no fun. So you learn about the link component for navigating from the UI and programmatic navigation to navigate from event handlers, for example. For the last bit, you learn about the default 404 page and how to customize it. These list of topics will give you a solid understanding of the routing feature in Next.js. Now the second feature which you should focus on is pre-rendering and data fetching. Begin by understanding what exactly is pre-rendering and why is it important. Then move on to the two forms of pre-rendering which Next.js offers. The first one being static generation. You learn that HTML is generated at build time. And if there is data that needs to be fetched, you'll turn your attention towards the get static props function. This function runs at build time and provides data as props to the component. You'll also need static generation with dynamic routes like product details. For that, you'll learn about another function called getStaticPaths. Sometimes though, after the page is generated at build time, you want the page to be regenerated once in a while to reflect changes in data. For that, you can dive into incremental static regeneration. However, if you want pre-rendering per request, you need to rely on server-side rendering with get server-side props. 
This function is used to fetch data on the server per incoming request. Server-side rendering, by the way, is the second form of pre-rendering in Next.js. Static generation being the first. Lastly, you would need client-side data fetching for which you can rely on your knowledge from a React application. Now, I would say that pre-rendering and data fetching is probably the most important feature to consider using Next.js for building React applications. So make sure you have a thorough understanding of this. All right, let's now move on to the third feature, which is API routes. Now you might be surprised if I tell you that Next.js is a full stack framework. So you can build frontend with React and at the same time, build APIs with JavaScript and of course, Node. Similar to routing on the frontend, API routes are also file-based. If you create a file within the API folder, it is automatically available as a route for you to make a request. You learn how to handle GET and POST requests. Next, you learn how to create dynamic API routes. For example, an API that accepts a product ID. Once you do learn about dynamic API routes, you can learn how to handle put, patch, and delete requests. Finally, you can understand about the catch all API route to handle multiple URL segments with a single function. Now for our fourth feature, we have styling. Now this is a feature where Next.js gives you a lot of freedom. You should begin by understanding how to add global styles and component specific styles as there is some restrictions. Next.js supports CSS modules out of the box, which works very well for scoped CSS. But you can also use other CSS solutions, which you're comfortable with like SAS or a CSS in JS solution like styled components, for example. All of them are supported. Now for the fifth section, I've compiled a few miscellaneous topics which I feel are important in your learning path. First is the underscore app.js file, which is sort of the root component for your app. It helps you with global CSS, defining app layouts, adding context providers, etc. You'll then learn about the head component, which lets you dynamically manage the content of the head section per page. Really important for SEO. Make sure to also learn about the image component, which provides a lot of optimization benefits. After that, a few nice to know topics are how to configure absolute imports and module paths, how to export the app as just HTML so that you don't need a server, how to add TypeScript support, a really cool preview mode feature, which is useful if you have a CMS, how to configure redirects for your application, and finally, how to add environment variables. This list of miscellaneous topics are not essential when you're beginning with Next.js, but as you start building more complex applications, they will really help a lot. And now for the last section, which is authentication. I recommend you take a look at the next auth library, which is my go-to solution for authentication with Next.js. Begin by learning how to set up an auth provider like GitHub, Facebook, or Gmail. Once that is configured, implement the sign in and sign out flow. Then come the core bits, given the sort of applications you can build with Next.js. You'll need to learn client-side authentication, server-side authentication, and API routes authentication. You'll also need to learn how to secure pages, both client-side and server-side. Finally, learn how to work with a database to persist the user data. 
if you have a knowledge of all these topics, you can start building production grade Next.js applications. Now, from where do you learn all this? Well, the Next.js docs is a pretty good place to start. If you want a complete beginner friendly tutorial though, we'll get that starting next week right here on this channel. So make sure to subscribe and enable bell notifications as we have a journey ahead of us. Let me know in the comment section if you're eagerly waiting for this series to start. I'll see you in the next year's series.